Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today, by popular request, I will be listening to and analyzing the greatest show on earth, performed by Nightwish. Now, I did a little research on this song and I understand that it's about evolution, so of course, I wore my science shirts. And it's going to be pretty long. I think that this performance is around 20 minutes, so you might want to grab something to drink ahead of time and then buckle up and let's get to it. Mm. So far, I'm, I'm really, really intrigued by this. You have like a galaxy that looks like it's behind in the background. I'm guessing this is like the start of evolution. And on top of that, Tomas has used bits of minimalism, which is a certain compositional style that has, um, it tends to sit in certain harmonic areas a little bit more and then like kind of arpeggiates in there and then shifts slowly. His shifts a little bit faster than most minimalism does. Um, a good example of that in some other popular film music is I think the theory of everything used a bunch of minimalism. So you might check that out. Um, so it's really, really cool to hear. I think he's used bits of minimalism because that it feels like it's coming from nothing, right? There is a lot of piano that's happening, but the way that it's moving around harmonically feels a little bit more uh, aimless in some ways while still growing. And I also hear, it sounds like some strings here. So it's kept, uh, it's actually, I don't hear any metal, ele metal elements just yet. Right? It kind of feels like a film score. Ooh. <laughs> okay, just probably a pretty good guess. I'm guessing that was supposed to represent the Big Bang, right? Because if we're talking about evolution, uh, that must have been the Big Bay moment because there was a firework and it banged, right? Okay, let's catch that firework one more time. <laughs> That's cool. I wasn't expecting a firework. Ooh, another one. It's a little chaotic. Huh. Huh. Ooh. Okay, before we get into this next section with the woodwind here, uh, there was something really interesting there in the orchestra, which was super cool. They had some, some sort of stabs where you had these moments uh, where you had accents in the orchestra that were at moments where you wouldn't have expected them. It was not on the downbeat. It was on uh, usually some sort of offbeat. So it felt really disjunct. And that's why I said it felt all of a sudden chaotic, um, which if you think about the way that the universe came into being with mean, the Big Bang, that would have been very chaotic. So I'm guessing that's what he was going for. Uh, I just love that they've incorporated timed fireworks into this. That is so cool and so appropriate because it is almost firework time here right now.
more fireworks. That was a really, really beautiful section. And uh, it, I think the flute to me is evoking some sort of Native American. Um, it could be another uh, Native instrument to many cultures, actually. So I shouldn't just say Native American. Um, flutes are, are one of the more common uh, Native instruments for many cultures. So uh, I like that he's pulled that in. It gives you... It really harkens back to like the beginning of how we might have first started making music. Um, although I would expect a lot more drums and like primal drumming to take place to evoke that as well. So maybe we'll hear that later. I don't know. Um, but I also wanted to point out there were some really light vocals happening in the background. There's some choir oohs and ahs. I'll run it back just a little bit so you can hear it. Oohs and ahs in the backgrounds always are meant for inspiration or awe-inspiring moments. So listen for that. We'll go back and hear them. Probably not a live choir, but I don't know for sure. More Big Bang? interesting let's see if I can show this to you guys in a still frame uh, I want to take a look no let's see if I can pause it okay right here um, I, I'm intrigued by the way the keyboard is tilted up that's for a much uh, much better hand position for his hands and it looks like the one that is the piano so the the one that has a piano patch on it, since this is a keyboard, right? It's software and it's not an acoustic piano. Um, so that looks like it's the bottom one, which is, I believe, longer than the top one. Maybe not. It looks like it's longer. It also looks like the bottom one is more heavy duty. So it probably has more response in those keyboard keys that would be closer to mimicking the action in an acoustic piano. So I'm guessing he uses that primarily for piano parts. And then when he wants to use some sort of synthesizer or like a string pad or something, he probably uses the top, uh, the top keyboard that he has there. It's a nice setup. Korg's are really good too. <gasps> Hi, Floor. pause I feel like they're gonna switch to a new section soon um I loved just loved her first few notes especially what a beautiful entrance I don't think she had any lyrics at first so just oohs and ahs so that would be maybe before speech um and the way that she made those sounds also didn't strike me as particularly classical um, but a little more, um, like it had a little more ethnic quality in there. Um, so it sounded like there was like maybe a little bit more pressed, 
uh, a little bit more of a pressed sound in the vocal production. And then when she started going into these more flowing phrases, uh, that classical technique came in a little bit more. So she got a little more dome on top. And then she was all of these descending lines, by the way, those are descending lines are likely to go flat when you're singing. And she's perfectly tuning each one and also really doing a nice job of uh, keeping that vibrato reined in. So there's a lot of clarity in her sound. Now, the one thing that I wish I had a little more of at this moment was clarity in the words. I didn't have an option to have subtitles playing during this video, but a bunch of you had requested that you wanted to see the Tamper version. So we went with it. I wish I knew what the words were here a little bit better. I've caught some, some words like sunrise, for example. And I understand that this is based on a, a piece of writing. The Greatest Show on Earth was also the name of that. Um, and I think it was Richard Dawkins is the author. So I, I think that some of those lyrics might be based on his work too. Um, and I also think there's a little bit from the origin of species at somewhere. Uh, or maybe it was just a reference to it at some point. That was in the backstory that I read. Let's keep going. Oh, also, I love her outfit. I forgot to mention that. It's a uh, very sorceress. And there's your choir in the background again. Okay, uh, anybody getting Willow vibes? Maybe some like James Horner? Well, before we go into this next part, there's some reading, but um, I, I want to take a moment and recognize, I think he's playing the bagpipes. Uh, I was expecting some more of that uh, flute, but we've got bagpipes here. So now I'm wondering if Tomas was maybe wanting to call out to different cultures that have evolved. Uh, I'm really curious. One of the things that I love about this particular channel's community is that we are so international, guys. I just love that so much. Music surpasses language. It surpasses all countries. It is it is uh, one language understood by everybody who has emotion, which is everyone. So I I love, I if I'm right, that he's calling out to different cultures, that makes me love Nightwish even more. Also, there's some fossils, I think, that they're showing in the background. So maybe this is early stages of life or something. Let's go back and catch the beginning of the reading. After sleeping through a hundred million centuries, we have finally opened our eyes on a sumptuous planet, sparkling with color, bountiful with life. Within decades, we must close our eyes again isn't it a noble and enlightened way of spending our brief time in the sun to work at understanding the universe and how we have come to wake up in it? <laughs> that was a sudden shift. Was not expecting that. The bag bagpipes underneath the reading, um, it felt brave and noble. So just wanted to point that out. Um, let's catch that shift again. So maybe I'm a little more prepared for it. To work at understanding the universe and how we have come to wake up in it. <laughs> Still wasn't ready for it. Figure of new life. <laughs> Whoa, fire. Prometheus reference? Not sure. Goldilocks, so she has 
Going back to that comment I had earlier on her looking a little bit like a sorceress, this feels like some sort of primal chant. And it feels, um, it really feels almost mystical. I, I, I'm digging it, liking the sea turtles in the background too. Uh, I really love the choice of using a chant there. And also all of their chanting tones are falling. If you will go back and listen to a teensy bit of it, listen to it, they're all falling down, um, which makes it feel a little bit more dark. shocked by how well Flor and Marco are blending. There are times when I can't tell which one is on top and I I'm like I do that thing normally. I normally know where voices are. I analyze tons of acapella music and there were many moments here when I couldn't tell which one was singing what note. That's really really great. Um also, having just heard Marco sing uh, the Phantom of the Opera and have heard, I've heard his growl and, and his scream in different registers now, it's sort of amazing how it can be so clean here too. And he's able to thin out the voice a little bit so that it matches Flora's timbre. But at the same time, she puts a little more point on her. So it's really cool to hear the two of them blend. Mm. Iron channels welcoming the outside world to the stuff of stars. Bedding the tree have a biological holy. Enter now. <laughs> on top right now, but they're so similar. Ooh, listen to that snarl that was there too. Oh, I want to go back and let's catch that snarl at the end. That was really cool. Also, I just caught it. I think that just a little bit before they finally said the title, The Greatest Show. Am I right on that? Let's go back. Let's catch that. Oh. Yeah, Greatest Show on Earth. And now you have this ad, ah, so all this, this big climactic moment. What a performance. <laughs>
pause before we go much further there. Uh, I'm really curious if headbanging is okay for your voice. <laughs> no, that seems like such a strange idea, but I was watching her and I was like, I wonder if that makes your neck muscles tighter or if maybe that helps to loosen them up. If I ever get to have coffee with Floor, I will ask her and report back. Um, <laughs> but also, I'm loving all of the, it, I liked the fire that was happening in there. It feels like it's really, maybe this is the beginning of human life that they're referring to at this point before it seemed like it was life coming and, and then, or maybe it's just taken a step back and said like, look at how awesome this is as things evolve. Uh, I want to catch this entrance of the slow part one more time. So back a couple seconds. Good time to pause. Um, there's so much in this right now that's harkening back to Carmina Burana, which I just think is one of the greatest pieces that's ever been written. Um, there's this like chanting chorus, right? So it feels like I could even be like a little bit of Rite of Spring moment, um, some Stravinsky. But also there's uh, the way that the time signature is divided up is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And most music that we listen to today is in four for time. So you'd have one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and. And this has got a more exciting drive behind it because of the way that it's subdividing into one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I really love that element of this composition. It's so cool. Um, definitely uh, so many aspects of like a grand symphony that's present along with these driving drums and and uh, it's just a lot more drive also in the sound of electronic instruments. It's such a cool blend of sounds and blend of different styles. I'm, I'm so in love with it. Okay, keeping, keeping on. I want to hear that part again. Sorry, don't go. That was so cool. It sounded like almost like a theremin the way she was singing. Um, she kept her vibrato really, really narrow, very minimal, but kept a lot of focus in the sound at the same time. Also, there was um, some interesting reverb that they put on her voice to give it a little more of that spooky feeling and some extended technique that I can hear in the strings as well. Okay, I want to hear it again. Such good tuning. <laughs> oh, and some... Is that really cool? Little echo from the reverb. Or like a delay even more than a burn. 
was, that was cool. That was a really cool moment, guys. Hmm. to do so many different things with her voice. This is great. She's in a high belt and she's adding a little grit here and there to it. I um, mean, it's it's just fascinating to hear that moment where she was almost sounding like a theremin before. That was all in her head voice. And then here, she's just really driving it through in a different way. That's really, really cool. Um, it's hard to find vocalists who are very accomplished at both, of, both sides of singing like this. So she's extremely extremely talented, but I'm sure that she has worked for that ability like crazy. Um, let's catch it a little bit more. Also, uh, they said something about Lucy. Was Lucy like, um, if I'm thinking back, I thought that that might've been like, was that like the remains of a Neanderthal that was discovered? Um, but they said something about apes too. So this definitely seems like we're now at, at the ape stage in evolution. soft touch that she did at the end where she went up one step and then just sort of decrescendo off decrescendoed off it um when I get really excited is sometimes I don't speak very well so if you guys hear me mess up words it's because I'm excited by this song a lot um I I am again intrigued by their blend so Marco you hear him when he's singing alone, he's able to put so much grit in, but then all of a sudden he pops up to a high note that's totally, totally unexpected for somebody that had a little more full sound down below as well. And then uh, when, they, when they're singing together, this time Flora had a little more classicalness in her, in her tone quality, and Marco actually matched that too. So I, both of them as vocalists are just astonishing and so capable of so many things.
Was there a reference to Bach in there? I could have sworn I, I heard a harpsichord. I'm sorry, we need to catch that again. That's a... That, that little bit that's on a harpsichord, that was... I think that that's a composition by Bach. I think it's in the Anna Magdalena notebook. That was cool. Huh. Cars, Industrial Revolution. Okay, got it. Okay, so that was an invitation. Will you sing with us? I think is what she said. We were here. Uh, what a cool call out to the audience. Uh, this is awesome. I'm loving seeing the pictures of different people. It feels, again, very inclusive, um, which is just something I feel like uh, people need to hear and understand in the world a lot more, this inclusivity. Um, but uh, it also, I was surprised with the Industrial Revolution. Uh, I often... I love technology. I think it's so cool. Um, and the the in the in the tone of the music, a lot of it was minor, so it made it feel dangerous, especially. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. I thought that they would have put a more major twist on it, perhaps, um, but they didn't. Instead, it felt really dangerous. As loud as you can, united. Oh, nice, nice yell off of that. There is a Wait, is that the end? Is that the end? I don't think that's the end yet. We were here! Oh, advertisement, Jesus. hi. We are going to die, and that makes us... Okay. Die. I think that that wasn't the end yet, but I'm actually not sure, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, that was so awesome, the way that they sang. Also, Marco and Flor, a bunch of the time, were singing in parallel octaves, which again represents that unity. Um, and then on top of that, um, at the very end, he did uh, a harmony, Marco did a harmony that went up as hers was continuing down the normal octave, so it seemed like it brought them closer together. So I thought that was some really cool vocal writing once again. Uh, and Floor's, uh, Floor's belt up there is just incredible. It's so clean, so well produced. I, I absolutely adore her voice. I think that we're done listening to Floor, but it sounds like we've got some more readings that are happening and some more visualizations in the back. So I'm gonna pop back here and we're gonna keep listening to it. Us, the lucky ones. Let's 
city. Most people are never going to die because they are never going to be born. The potential people who could have been here in my place, but who will in fact never see the light of day, outnumber the sand grains of Sahara. Certainly those unborn ghosts include greater poets than Keats, scientists greater than Newton. We know this because the set of possible oh. people allowed by our DNA so massively exceeds the set of actual people. In the teeth of these stupefying odds, it is you and I in our ordinariness that are here. We privileged few He's such a brilliant composer. How dare we whine at our inevitable return to that prior state from which the vast majority have never stirred. This is so interesting to me. I feel like you know, in post, there's this part that's still continuing, but they're going out and taking their vows. I feel like this is probably still part of the song, um, especially as it is on the album, but I'm really not sure. This is one of the first times I've not known when a song ended in a video. So you guys get some really raw footage right here. I'm a little uncomfortable. Um, it definitely sounded like it was uh, they were done singing, um, but I feel like this sort of postlude that's happening with this reading, which I think it, I think it's from Richard Dawkins. I think it is, I'm not sure. Um, I, it's really, uh, the words are, have a really big impact. I love the way that they're talking about essentially the impact a person can have in their one short life. We were here. It's very inspiring and uplifting, right? Like just go live, live bright, live hard. I feel very inspired. We're gonna keep going though. Absolutely, this is a hero scene from a movie right now. I could see it in a film. Right, brass is heroic. We had this like huge heroic moment of life is wonderful, but there's still, it sounds like there's going to be a play out still. And also at one point they perfectly timed a bow with a big moment in the music. Uh, that was pretty awesome. It feels like such a celebration of living. I love the way they've mixed the audience and the fireworks sounds in with the music right now. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one. And that whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, 
From so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been, and are being, evolved. Wow. Wow. What a work of art. There were so many pieces in there that reminded you of the struggle of life, of where we've come, but then at the end just felt like this absolute celebration. Even the way that it faded into nothingness felt like maybe people, I don't know, maybe people were going to become more enlightened or maybe they'll fade away into nothingness, nothingness, but it's still, ah, it was just really beautiful and amazing and epic. And I love, love, love the song now. I need to listen to it I, I don't know. I need to keep listening to it for days, for weeks, for months. I think there's so much in there that I missed. Please comment below on some of your favorite things about this song. I pointed out a few things in there. I was particularly intrigued to hear a little bit of Bach, I think. Uh, can you comment on moments, especially ones that I missed or the ones that you really liked maybe that I did call out? I would love for people to have a conversation about how much they love the song and how it inspires them to just have an impact in life. So thank you so much for this recommendation. I loved it. Keep those recommendations coming. And I will be here every Monday and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. If you don't want to miss out on that, do hit subscribe and push the bell for notifications. And I'll hope to see you soon. Bye.